been playing around with ChatGPT for a couple of weeks now to see if I can use it as a tool in my technical writing tasks. And I have some interesting insights to share with you about the things that ChatGPT can help a technical writer with and things that we absolutely should not rely on ChatGPT to do. And if you don't know what ChatGPT is, just google it it has been all over the internet for about a month now so information about it is very easy to find okay let's jump into it the first task that i do when starting a new project is to learn and research and study the topic that i'm writing about and i've found that chat gpt can make that process really really quick for me for example let's say i'm writing about change data capture which is an important concept in data integration so i can ask chat gpt to help me understand change data capture so now it has given me this write-up about what change data capture is. This is an excellent starting point for me as a writer to learn about a topic that I'm supposed to write about. So if I was going about this in my regular way without ChatGPT, I would just Google it. Let's ask Google the same question. What is change data capture? And then we have all these articles. But the problem with the articles on Google is that they are written mostly by organizations who have products to sell. For example, we have this article from Strim, and then we have this article from Fivetran, and Rivery, and RocketSet, and Microsoft. And all of these will have information about what is change data capture, but it will have information about how change data capture works with their product. We also have this article from Wikipedia, which you would think was more helpful than like the product driven articles. But then with the problem with articles on Wikipedia or similar websites is that they don't give you the beginner level information. This article directly jumps into the methodology of CDC. And that's not what I want to learn now because I'm not there yet. You know what I mean? So for someone like me who just wants to get a sense of what change data capture is. Chat GPT actually does a fantastic job of going through all the articles, parsing through all the technical content, and then figuring out bits and pieces of it that serve my purpose. And it seems to be unbiased information because it is not pertaining to a particular product. So this is a very beginner level introduction to change data capture that is unbiased from a product perspective. I think it is an excellent tool to complement a Google search when you're starting a new technical writing project and researching the topic you're writing about. I don't think it can completely replace Google just yet, and I'll talk about that later in this video, but I do think this is a tool that is very helpful for the research and self-study part of the technical writing process. The second technical writing task that I think ChatGPT can be very helpful with is coming up with a content outline. So for example, the project I'm working on right now for work for real is the managing Airbyte documentation. So I can ask ChatGPT to give me a list of topics that I should include in the managing Airbyte section of our documentation. It's telling us to set up and configure Airbyte connectors, fair. Creating and managing data integration pipelines, okay. Monitoring and troubleshooting the pipelines, managing schedules and triggers, managing data quality and transformation, managing access and security, managing performance and scalability. This is literally what I would have come up with if I was writing the outline for that section. And moreover, it's not just one person's or one team's perspective on the content, on the topics that people are looking for. It's literally trained on a bunch of data integration platforms and it collated all that information and processed all that information to put together an outline and customized it for Airbyte, which is again something I would have done, right? I always read competitor documents or documents from allied products in the data ecosystem to get insight into what topics are people discussing and asking questions about. So it basically did all that work and gave it to me in like a minute or two. This is a huge time saver. I would not rely on this. I would take this as the first draft of the outline and then I would take it to the engineering team and the sales team and the support teams and the go-to-market teams and I would get their input and rework the outline to make sure we cover all the content that we need. 
for the users but this is a solid first step in the process and then the final task that i think chat gpt is very helpful for is maintaining voice and tone consistency across documentation and i have an example for that this is one of our important documents for airbags it's the postgres source connector documentation and postgres is a very important connector for us so we want to make sure that all the content here is as polished as it can be the problem with that is that we are an open source company which means people edit documentation and i don't always know about it so we had someone add this section uh, to the documentation and because i did not know about it i didn't edit it so it does not follow our style guide it is a little too verbose it is a little too engineering speak and it can be edited to make it more user friendly so what i'm going to do i'm not even going to copy paste the section all i'm going to do is copy the link i'm going to ask chat gpt to improve the content and just give it the link yeah this is a much more user-friendly version of the content but it's still not following the technical writing best practices like it's still using passive voice this is still a big improvement on the content that we have now and that's what i meant by it can help us standardize the voice and tone of the documentation across all docs especially because we as an open source company have so many contributors and everyone has a different facility with language some of our contributors do not have english as their first language so i think this is just a very good tool to make sure that the documentation sounds as if it's written by one person because it will be edited by one software which is chat gpt but definitely think chat gpt is a very interesting and helpful tool to use in the technical editing part of the technical writing process i would not use this content as it is though because i need to check if it maintained the technical accuracy of the original content or did it just like wordsmith the content but it lost the technical accuracy of the original content i'll check this response for technical accuracy i'll have the engineer who wrote the original content check it for technical accuracy and then i would incorporate it in our documentation to summarize the three tasks that i think chat gpt can help tech writers with are information gathering and research content outline generation and content checklist and then technical editing. Let's now chat about the drawbacks of ChatGPT. The first drawback of ChatGPT is that it cannot write original content for you. The way ChatGPT works is that it parses the internet and collects all the information about the topic that you ask about. And it puts that information through its algorithms and its AI systems and generates a response for you. The prerequisite for that process to happen is existing content. Right? It needs content to feed itself and to train itself on to generate the response. So if your engineering team is working on a brand new feature that does not exist yet, and hence there is no content on the internet about it, ChatGPT cannot write content for you. You would have to give it at least the first draft that it can improve upon. So that's the first drawback of ChatGPT is that as of now, it cannot write original content for you. The second drawback of ChatGPT is that you cannot rely on the content because it might be technically inaccurate. That's one of the biggest criticisms of ChatGPT I have seen on the internet so far is that it is very good at giving absolutely wrong information very confidently. For example, I asked ChatGPT, how do you set up a Descript connector with Airbyte? And it gave me this big write-up, like a very step-by-step -step procedure on how to set up a Descript connector with Airbyte. We don't have a Descript connector for Airbyte yet. So all this information, if you just look at it, it seems very valid and it will be true if we ever develop a connector for Airbyte. But that's what I mean. This is all inaccurate information about a connector that does not exist, but the way it presents it so confidently, it makes you feel like it's giving you the right information. So you have to be very, very critical 
about the information that it gives you and you have to do your due diligence on that information and then the third drawback of chat gpt is that its information model is pretty outdated that might have changed recently i need to check on that the last time i checked chat gpt was trained on information that was available either before or up until 2021 so all the new information that has been published in 2022 has not been fed into its information model yet. So the responses that you get from ChatGPT might have outdated information because it does not have the information that was published in 2022. Those are the three drawbacks of ChatGPT is that it cannot write original content or it tries to write original content which is like absolute bullshit. It can give you inaccurate information and the information might be outdated. So having run those experiments, do I think technical writing roles are at risk because of chat GPT? Yes and no. It depends on what role we are talking about. I think some technical writing roles will be automated, but that has always been true. Technical writing is an evolving field and some or the other part of it is always up for disruption and automation. Think about how much technology has already automated away certain technical writing jobs. For example, back in the day when documentation used to be in the form of print manuals, there was a whole industry and a whole set of people who specialized in the page design, the page layout, the page setting, the printing of those manuals. That industry does not exist in the same form that it did back then. Most of it has moved to a web-based form now. A more recent example is that in the field of translation. I saw this very insightful thread on Twitter that talked about how AI destroyed the field of translation years ago. This is a YouTube comment that says, I spent decades of my life learning foreign languages only to see the translation industry destroyed by AI. The inferiority of the machine translations a few years back did not stop the destruction of the industry. The machine translation cost nothing and so the price for all translation came crashing down because the bottom feeders used machine translation. Most clients, the bottom of the pyramid that kept the industry going, did not care about the quality of the translation. If we expect that clients pricing human-made products will save industries, we are being very delusional. The vast majority of clients will go for the process that costs less. It reminds me of the better, faster, cheaper framework, which basically states that in a capitalist society, when somebody is deciding to pay for something, they can choose to get something done either better, faster, or cheaper. You can pick two, but not three. Granted, humans can make things better, but AI can make things cheaper and faster. And when you give that option to companies who just want documentation to exist, they don't care about like the best documentation their product can have. They just want documentation so they wouldn't have to think about it, like just good enough documentation. We might see a day when AI might be able to do that for us. Automation has already taken over tasks that technical writers were known for. Tasks like writing UI help. We have tools for that now. Writing release notes. Again, automated tools exist. Even technical editing to some extent with tools like Grammarly. I do think this trend will continue where parts of the technical writing process will be automated. And if that happens, Technical writing as an industry, the way we see it now, will evolve to a different form that we will have to adapt to. In my experience, the key to a long-term career in technical writing is awareness and adaptability. Keep up with the trends, be very open-eyed about where the industry is going, what tools are coming up, what are the people doing, what are companies willing to spend money on, and then level up your skill set and your experience to make sure that you will be part of the next evolution of the field and not left behind. In the near future, how I see this personally affecting my career is that I think it will automate some parts of my technical writing process and that's good because it means that I don't have to spend time on the tasks that I don't like and then I can focus on like the big picture strategic creative projects. Overall, I'm very excited about using ChatGPT and other tools in my everyday technical writing tasks and I'm cautiously optimistic about the ways in which these tools can transform the field of documentation and technical writing. That's all for this video. I hope this was interesting and I'll see you in the next one.